I got this American Eagle carrying off the American flag in the battle blank, uh, ready to get turned up here. Just figured I'd come out, do a video, show you how to turn these up. These are different than my Alumilite blanks. Um, these are actually an epoxy instead of uh, Alumilite. So these are uh, made with liquid diamonds, epoxy. And it's a little bit softer. It cuts a lot easier, polishes, sands a lot faster, um, but still just as beautiful and crystal clear. And you can see right through all sides of those. If you order the blanks trued up, um, you spend that extra $2, get your blanks trued up, then they'll be completely ready to go directly onto your lathe, throw on your bushings, ready to turn. And you'll notice these facets cut into the top. And this is just so that I can get it trued up with my sanding jig. So let's go ahead and get this turning and we will uh, get this going for you. So the purpose of this video is just to show you all the things that you can use in order to true it up. So of course here's a round negative rake scraper. I'll use this just to start off the corners. Lower that down a little bit. And you can use whatever you want. It'll cut it no matter what. This stuff is pretty forgiving. So there's a round negative rake scraper. Here's an R2 Easywood Tools negative rake scraper that I'll use as well. And this one's really nice because you can actually do plunge cuts into it. Oop, only if you've got it tightened down enough. There we go. So you can do plunge cuts straight down into that. Easy peasy. Even if you want to just use standard tools, here's a gouge. not quite sharpened as much as it should be. So you can still see it's taking off sections there. Or even if you want to just use just a standard scraper, you can do that too. Raise that up. This one's a lot thinner than those easy wood tools. So here's just a standard scraper. Now I really highly recommend using a scraper tool. It tends to cut a lot easier in my opinion than a gouge does. You get a cleaner surface. Um, so you can use you know, just a standard um, regular scraper. And this one you can see that polished edge that I've got on there. I do that by hand actually. But you can use this and it works really, really well. See those ribbons that we got coming off on there? Or you can just go back and do your plunge cuts with your easy wood tools R2 negative rake. And this is my preferred method, it just seems faster. A little more controlled, straight back and forth. I almost never worry about catches. Alright, I'll just go ahead and turn this and I'll show you when it's done. Now it looks pretty dark there. It's not you know perfectly clear and there's some ridges and valleys, but we'll clean that up with uh, just some sanding paper. All right, so now we're gonna get this sanded. So we've got um, our blank on here. We're gonna use just some 320 grit. This is automotive 3M paper. And we're just gonna use this wet sanding in order to get rid of some of those peaks and ridges and things to get it all nice and uh, uniform. Turn down to about 1600.
Doesn't need a whole lot of work because it, using that negative rake, it leaves a really smooth, nice finish. Just a little bit of work just to get it nice and uniform, get rid of some ridges, get rid of some tool marks. Do one quick pass. Honestly, I think that's probably good with the 320. It's pretty aggressive with this stuff. But now I can feel it's pretty smooth. I don't feel any ridges or bumps or high spots. Got that cleaned up pretty good. But now I've got some scratch marks. Oh, we'll just have to work on getting rid of moving up on the grains. 600 and then on the polishing pads. All right, now you can see there's a vast improvement in the quality there. There's no more scratch marks from that 320. So now we'll just work on polishing this up with our micro mesh pads. If you guys want to see a video on how to use these, I'll throw a link in it here. Otherwise, I'm just going to skip through onto the HUD Ultra Gloss. Got this blank all polished up. We're using our uh, polishing pads ready for our HUD Ultra Gloss. And you can see that blank is starting to look a lot brighter. Um, when it's all scratched up, you know, the light can't quite get into the label casting that's beneath the resin. And so the print will look really dark to start. But then as you get that resin clear, more light will transmit through. And then that image will just pop. And it'll only get better using a little HUD Ultra Gloss plastic polish. So this stuff's really easy to use. We just turn this on about 2,000 RPM. Put a spot on about the size of a dime. We just get that worked over the entire thing, just applying, hardly even touching it, just letting the compound get over the entire blank, and then we'll press in, and we'll buff that on. Get nice and worked over, get start warm up a little bit. That's how you know you got enough friction, and then you just buff it off. And keep changing to a new section of patch until your patch no longer comes off with a black spot, like so. And now she's done. Now we can get that put together. All right, as you can see, got a beautiful finish on that. Wonderful clarity. It turns out really nice. And then these Sierras go together super, super easy. You just take your, your tip here. Line that up with your seam line. So there, you can see the seam line. Just take that clip, cover it up, and press that together. Then we put together our front mechanism. I've already got my spring on my ink. Drop that down the front, thread on our mechanism, check that for function, and then press that in from the back. There we go. That one is done. Really happy with how that looks. So that's how you turn up one of my tube-in pen blanks.